Oh, okay, cool, great. By the way, that tree's not living anymore, so... Uh, well, you know, I can't... I'm going to start us off with introduction, because, you know, what sermon, you know, can't go without an introduction. So, um, like uh, Carrie said, my name is Bryce Wharton. I'm 20 years old. Uh, I'm currently attending two colleges. In the fall, I'll be finishing up two more classes at Dell Tech for an associate's degree in web development. And then I will be also starting classes in the fall for Wilmington at Georgetown. And I, I attend church at the Odyssey Church in Selville, Delaware, where I also help lead the, uh, lead the music team there. So basically what I just told you, all the credentials I just listed, I'm in no way what pastors like to label themselves as professional, a, a professional Christian. I'm just a Carrie's Camp Kid. So I'm sure that with many of you here, you guys can tell a bunch of stories and uh, stories I'd probably rather not hear a majority of the time. But um, I just want to say how excited I am to have the opportunity to come up here and preach. It's been a dream of mine, and I'm just really excited to have gotten the call to do this. Um, for those of you who don't know, I love Carrie's Camp. Let me rephrase that. My family loves Carrie's Camp. Um, Carrie's Camp time is one of the best times of the year. Um, and we love it so much that if there's ever an event that's scheduled on a night at Carrie's Camp, we're not going to that. I'll give a story, for example. My grandparents had to go camping up to Killens Pond. And I think one year when we went, it, the last night of the camp trip was falling on the first night of camp. I left. We, my whole family, and I, and I really thank God that my whole family loves Carrie's Camp. I mean, you know, my parents met here at Carrie's Camp when they were young. They married here at Carrie's Church. We live on Carrie's Camp Road. And I think it's safe to say that we're the best Carrie's Campers here at Carrie's Camp. We're number one. <laughs> So I consider Carrie's Camp my hometown, and I pray that everybody here treats me better than everyone that uh, Jesus' hometown treated him when he preached at his hometown. So uh, anyway, I want to turn my attention now to the BBS kids that are sitting here. Um, you guys had obviously had a really fun week from just what I sat there and listened to. You guys did some pretty cool Bible stories, made some pretty cool crafts, I imagine. And even, did you guys do the worst slide today? No. No? Oh, man. Oh, maybe next year then. <laughs> the water slide is always fun, so you know I've always looked forward to that. So um, I'm sorry to hear that it got canceled. But um, so I um, and you guys did a really good job singing too. Um, and uh, BBS might have been officially over a few minutes ago, but I still want to see if you guys remember what you guys learned at BBS. So on day one, you guys learned that God's love is what? That's right. You guys learned that how. And the story for that was how you learned about how God talked to Moses through the burning bush to anoint him to lead God people, God's people out of Egypt. On day two, you guys learned that God's love is what? Rahab. That's correct. You guys learned how God kept his word to Rahab, Jericho, for harboring the Israelite spies to save her and her family from the capture of the city. On day three, you guys learned that God's love is... That's great. You guys learned how David, a, shepherd, a young shepherd boy, not a warrior at all, came up and actually and took down Goliath, the nine-foot giant. On day four, you guys learned that God's love is what? You guys learned how Jesus forgave a sinful woman and anointed him. His feet with perfume, her tears, and she even kissed them. And today, on day five, you guys learned that God's love is what? Thank you, Isaac. Um, so, <laughs> You guys learned how an angel of the Lord came to came to free Peter from his prison. That's an awesome job. Let's give him a round of applause. That was a really good job. So clearly, you guys know how incredible, how faithful, invincible, unconditional, and how real God's love truly is. And that's very important. But I have a question for you guys. Um, so what do you guys plan to do with everything you learned here this week in BBS? Let me, ref let me rephrase that question a bit and ask it like this. So when you guys leave Carrie's camp this summer, you guys get ready to go back to school shopping and, you know, eventually get back to school. Um, will you guys honestly even think back to what you learned here at BBS? What, what you learned here is pretty important, and God's love for you is powerful and amazing, and it's something that everybody should know about. Um, so it's something that everybody should know about. So are you, do you honestly see yourselves sharing what you learned about God's love with any of your friends or your families? It may seem like an easy thing to forget it to do, especially when you're caught in what's going on in the world with plans. But talking about God's love is not the only thing you have to do. You can start living God's love by praying to God about your family, your friends, your community, and anything really. 
you can show God's love when you do this because you care about people and you want the best for them. And you know and you recognize that God has the ability to do anything through prayer. Prayer has power. So the first thing you have to do is pray. The second thing is you can grow in God's love by studying his word. Now, studying doesn't sound like a fun thing. I never like studying for a test. But it's a, it's a really fundamental part of Christianity. We need to know what God has left for us to read, has left for us to read so we can be informed and inform others about the truth and what he wants us to do for him. And the last thing you need to do, I'm going to call this living like Jesus. This, this could be a wide variety of things. This is standing up for somebody who's being bullied in school. This is buying lunch for somebody. This is being for a friend to somebody who really needs, uh, really needs a friend. There are acts of kindness that we do because we're called to do that. And when we apply all this to our life through praying, through studying, and living like Jesus, um, we become light in the darkness. And we can only be light into the world when we are daily praying and studying and, like I said, living like Jesus. When we don't keep the sword of the Spirit sharp, then we lose our brightness and we cannot make disciples for the kingdom. So let me demonstrate this with a model I have here on the stage. I have a lamp, and we're actually we're gonna do, this has probably never been done before, we're actually gonna turn off some of the lights here in the tabernacle. All right, wow, that's dark. Oh. So, I can see. So, no, I can, I can read it. I, I, I read it. I watch TV, so my eyes are fine. So, um, so, as you can tell, it is obviously dark in here. And this represents the world that we live in. Ever since Adam and Eve ate the fruit from the Garden of Eden, sin has become a part of our world. It runs our world. Jesus says in John chapter 3, verses 19 through 21, when talking to Nicodemus about being born again, verse 19 it starts, it says, This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in sight of God. Thank you. Jesus came into this world to bring light to it. Let's say that everyone in the world is a lamp. The lamp will not turn on unless you do, the, unless you do something very, very important. And that's accepting God's love. John 3, 16 states, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God's love is a concept so far above our earthly understanding that we will never understand it fully while we're here. This love is so great that Jesus sacrificed himself to die in the most brutal way possible in order for us to go to heaven and live with him one day. Once you've accepted Jesus as your personal savior and believe that he died on the cross, our lamp is turned on. Now, if you notice, you know, it's, it's dark, but and if you notice in this darkness, this light is somewhat attractive. It, has, it kind of has my attention. It should have your attention, too. And I'm sure you've noticed this, too. But if you're ever walking outside, especially on a night, hot summer night like this, and you see a bunch of bugs that are flying around security lights outside buildings and stuff like that, they are, bugs are just really attracted to light. And light is something that just takes your attention. There's actually a bug right here. Um, so, <laughs> Light is very quick and powerful. So let's just say, for example, that a friend of yours, just to prove how powerful light is, that a friend of yours went out on a clear night, maybe somewhere in Gumboro, where there's flat land, and he, yeah, Gumboro, woo! Gumboro. Let's just say that he had a candle, and you wanted to go, see, you wanted to walk and see how far you can go before you can't see the, the flame of a candle. You can be as far away as, listen to this, 3.6 miles from your friend on a clear night, no wind, and still be able to see the candlelight. So on a football perspective, um, that is a length of 62.5 football fields. Football starts Sunday, so I'll just have to play in there. So, um, so light definitely is attractive in the dark. The speed of light can illustrate just how quick Jesus can come to you when you need him. Um, but accepting Jesus isn't all you have to do. You still have to read your Bibles. You still have to pray, you have to still have to pray daily to God. And of course, you have to live like Jesus. When you start doing more of these acts, your light's going to get brighter. The brighter your light is, the more pleasing and attractive it is. And of course, the more you pray and study, the stronger your faith becomes. And the stronger your faith is, the more difficult it is for your light to go out. 
Temptation from sin is always trying to disconnect you from God. And with sin like lying and stealing and lust, that's, there's an example of sin that will try to pull you away from that. But if you firmly root yourself in God through faith, which again is through prayer, study, and living like Jesus, I can't stress that enough. It'll be easier for you to shake off your temptation and your light won't dim. Everybody struggles with this though. As humans, we are all sinners by nature and there are temptations for some of us that are really hard for us to beat. What if we surround ourselves with good influences in our lives rather than the bad tempta and temptation is something that we can defeat? If you can hang out with the, if you hang out with the wrong group of people that do the wrong things that you shouldn't be doing and you and maybe you don't you don't partake in what they're doing, chances are that eventually you'll be influenced to do it. And without that, and with that, you'll start to dim. And eventually, if you don't correct the situation, get out of that soon, your light will go out. I grew up with one of my best friends I met at um, my, old, my previous home church, Trinity, um, Trinity Church out of Laurel. And um, he, I met him at this thing we had Tuesday nights called Rec Night. And uh, actually, funny thing, initially, we didn't like each other. But um, as time went on, we became, we became really good friends. And as, as we came, came from middle school to high school, I, um, I moved on to Sussex Tech. He stayed in Laurel. And um, so we got to high school. And we became even closer because once I got a car, we started hanging out every weekend. We'd go to everybody, we'd go to each other's houses, we'd play video games, we we would go to the mall, we would go to Walmart and play hide and seek. We did a lot of crazy stuff. It was still it was still okay, but you know. So he was a very he was somebody I always wanted to be around. He was very comforting. He was a funny person to talk to. He was somebody that I just really loved being around. And it's worth noting, too, that he didn't grow up in the best home life. He lived with his mom. And when he came out to youth group, which was just up the road for him at the time in middle school, his mom um, was really into drugs. His stepfather didn't really care for him. His older step siblings that lived with him were either in prison, you know, messing with drugs or just sleeping around. And eventually he did move out once he got into high school and moved into his dad's, dad's trailer with his older brother. And things were great then. But with the people he started surrounding himself with in school, he started getting to marijuana. And I didn't, I didn't like that. So I actually recommended for him to go on this weekend retreat program I'm heavily involved with called Christmas. It's a three-day program where kids from the 10th grade to college go to strengthen their relationship with Jesus. And it's great for teens and, you know, even for people for that aren't even sure about Jesus. So side note, I highly recommend it for anyone who wants to truly feel and experience God love in a way. But back to the story. Um, I recommend, I wanted him to go to Christmas. And at the time, he was, he, you know, his mom was still messing with drugs and that hurt him deeply. His older brother got him at, um, stationed in Afghanistan too and he was really hurt about that. So he ended up going with another friend of mine from youth group that weekend. And I was actually on team that weekend. I've already been on the program, but I was on team to witness him go. He was very cooperative. He took everything that was presented to him really well. We laughed together. We cried together many times that weekend. But what I'll never forget when he told me this week, that weekend was the last day of the weekend, which was Sunday, right before we left to go home. He came up to me after we had opened letters from received from uh, family members and friends to encourage him for the weekend. He told me straight in the face, he said, Bryce, every time I look up into the sky, I can't help but see God's holding his hands out like this. So his light was shining brightly. After that weekend, he was reading his Bible. He was attending youth group with a more serious and reverent sense. He was he, he, he quit doing marijuana. We even met up with some people from his weekend and we had a little reunion night and a Bible study right at his house. He even came back later that year to serve on the upcoming Christmas weekend. And he was really into it spiritually. But after that weekend, things kind of started to change in our lives. I got a job at a pizza restaurant and started working a lot that, summer, that coming up summer. I encouraged him to get a job at the fast food restaurant that he lives behind. I even remember going with him to fill out the application and turning it in. And I really regret recommending him to go to this place. Because what I know about it now and what he tells me that's been going on there ever since he's worked there, um, I would have encouraged him to go elsewhere. But he got the job, nevertheless, and we both, both of us started working. And our time was consumed with working, and we didn't get to hang out as much as we did. So, as time went by, and this lamp, I can't tune it backwards, so. As time went by, he started hanging out with the crowd there. He got back into marijuana. He was even messing around with a little bit of heavier drugs for a bit. He got into drinking to the point where he would be intoxicated. He got into a relationship and started doing acts of intimacy. But what he told me a couple weeks ago was something that was a knife to my heart. 
He told me that he doesn't believe in the God of the Bible anymore. He just believes, excuse me, he just believes in a God, but not the God of the Bible. His light went out. It was bright and it was shining for Jesus. Now he's disconnected from Jesus. He's rejected his love. It was when he was surrounding himself with people in a bad environment that he started getting into bad things and his beliefs changed. His beliefs compromised and he changed. His light, his lamp in this world is now off. What good is a lamp that isn't lit? Nobody goes to the store to buy a lamp that won't work. That's a lamp not serving his purpose. Therefore, my friend is not doing his purpose in his life right now. And I warn you not to let this happen to you. But here are some steps that you can do to prevent this from happening to you like it happened to my friend. You need to get involved for the first, number one is you need to get involved in a community full of Christians. If you don't go to church, you should go to church. If you've been pushed away from one church, don't let, don't let them push you away from Jesus. There's a lot, lot, a lot of churches and not every church is the same. If you don't go to church because it's boring and you kind of give up your church too quickly, there are plenty of churches to choose from with different denominations and different music that they play there to consider. It doesn't even have to be a church. You just, a community could be considered a Bible study, a men's group, a youth group, um, a, felt, a school Christian group like FCA, a weekend retreat program like Christmas. So plug into a Christian community is the first step. Another one that I think is really important is you need an accountability partner or partners. Along with having church community to be part of, you need friends that you're closer to, to talk often and meet up perhaps maybe once a week or twice a month. Someone that you talk to about your daily struggles and your problems that you go through in life. With accountability partners, you guys can together fight through each other's battles and support each other during trials. I have a group of friends who are my accountability partners. I've met a lot of them through Chrysalis. I hang with these members at least once a week, if not maybe once every two weeks. These people have supported me through my many trials, as well as we celebrate good times together. If you apply these two steps in your life, as well as daily prayer, study, and living like Jesus, you should not have to worry about getting unplugged from Jesus. So in closing, how is your lamp? Is your light on? Are you going out and living your Christian purpose through praying to God daily? Through studying God's word and living like Jesus? Is your light dim and you want to make it brighter by strengthening your current relationship with Jesus? Are you even plugged in? Is Jesus or God someone that you haven't talked to and believed in for years? Let tonight be the night that you accept God's love and make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior. Or if your light is on, let tonight be the night that you strengthen your faith and brighten your light. Let tonight be the night you rededicate yourself to Jesus. Imagine a world, imagine this stage filled with lit lamps. It would be so much more brighter in here. Let it start here. Let it start now. Let it start tonight. Let it start at Carrie's camp. For some of you who heard Shane's message last night at the youth tabernacle, I like what he said last night. He said, don't let the world change you. You go and change the world. Let there be light. And light's coming. <laughs> and there was light. So, okay, so we can turn the lights on back now. Thank you, Randy. Um, but I want to, I want to open the altar tonight to anyone who wishes to use it. If there are any of you who want to accept Jesus into your life, or if you want to rededicate your life to Him, I urge you to come up. I really do. Don't don't postpone it. Come up. I see. I asked someone to come up to make himself available for prayer. If anyone wants to come up to rededicate their life to Christ, to give their life over to Christ, if need be. We're here for you. The altar is open. So don't delay on this. It's, it's some, not something you can easily push off for later because later may not come for some people. Me and Steve are going to sing a song called Mighty to Save. So if you know the lyrics, I'm um, ask a couple singers to come up. So you guys want to come up again. Um, so we're going to sing a song and we're going to open up the altar for prayer. And Mr. Craig's going to come up and uh, make himself available to anyone who needs prayer tonight, who needs, who wants to accept Jesus into their life. Who wants to rededicate Jesus?